In Zynga Stewart, you directed four of the last five episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six, including the finale. Um, and you got to show the band at the peak of its fame and its downfall. And I've heard you say that you were inspired by Goodfellas. <laughs> um, so when did you realize like that film would be the touchstone for you for this? I think it was always sort of probably floating in the ether because I did watch um, The Last Waltz, which was Scorsese's documentary on a rock band, just in the me doing research on shooting live concerts. Um, so it might've just already been planted somewhere back there, but I think it was really in hearing from our showrunner that the two blocks of Daisy are two different movies. And so don't think of, you know, you have to build on the first thing or it's a smooth continuation. He was like, it's not that. The first, you know, block, they are scrappy, you know, just starting out band from Pittsburgh. The second block, they're Fleetwood Mac at the height of their fame. And so, and I thought about in Goodfellas, because at first I was like, well, they're bigger. So maybe it's slicker, maybe it's because they've got more money. And then I thought about in Goodfellas, that almost operates in two halves too. And the first half is like they're low level gangsters. They're not, there's not that much money. They got to give back everything in tribute. And by the second half, when the money is really coming in, the cinematography changes and gets purposefully sloppy and beautifully messy. Um, it's really handheld and it's not the super fluid, um, you know, oneers anymore. We did do a lot of oneers in the, the concert so that it, it felt like we were seeing a live show and not cutting it all up. Um, but yeah, it, it just hit me like, oh, that's how we do it. We we start to get messier. We start to to feel the rough edges that there's like drugs and money and all kinds of debauchery happening. So, so that was it. Yeah, like there's so, like just hedonistic lifestyle, yeah. like giving into all their vices. And I, I feel like you really, you you captured that in, in the finale for sure because it, it, there's this like, desperation of like between like every single character like they're all like seeking something or pushing back against something yeah. um and then you have the concert on top of that as well and and that's such a, a huge component of that episode as well because it's their last concert so what was the logistics of that and how did you block that <laughs> it was it was a megillah <laughs> um we basically, my DP, Jeff Cutter, and I would sit down on Saturdays and I had all these little uh, toys from Minecraft and like, we'd be like, this one's Daisy and this one's Billy and this one's Karen and like set up the stage. And then, and then we had to do the same thing with the script because it moves backwards and forwards in time so much that we had to just write out, you know, this happens in this time, this happens in that time. And then how do I transition, you know, how do I make a shot that transitions from something on stage into something that happens either in the recent past or a while ago? Um, so there's a lot of just sitting down and thinking, what exactly is this? Like, what happens? What is this beat? Then what happens after that? What's the best order to cover that in? Um, how do we best move the camera? How do we transition in and out of these different timelines? So it was, um, you know, and like, how do we make room for like the tiling and all of the stuff when you have 30,000, you know, seat audiences to to fill? <laughs> so yeah, well, it was you, bite by bite. Minecraft as, as your mini model for the concert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you, you um, started, you know, directing music videos um, mm -hmm. with obviously, you know, artists very very famous musicians it's, what, what is what would you say is the difference between directing musicians and actors playing musicians um I would say the preparation is different I think mm -hmm. that you know actors really want to be prepared they will study the musician. They will study the material. They want to, you know, ask you the director questions. They want to talk to the showrunner. I think like being prepared is extremely important to actors playing musicians. And with Daisy, I know those actors prepared for years during COVID, learning their instruments, working with vocal coaches. Whereas musicians like 
they're at their best when something is spontaneous and they've rehearsed, but then they have to put it away completely and just feed off of what the audience is giving back because they do have an audience as opposed to, you know, just us sitting at Video Village, not close enough to, to really affect them. Um, and, I, and I also think that musicians, you know, art actors are they really want to be a big part of like the collaboration and musicians, I think a lot of times are auditioning you <laughs> and like, and so, and that was something that I would always remind the actors of is like, there's a certain sort of like, you know, I'm not auditioning for you. You're auditioning for me when you work with musicians. It's like that swagger. It's like, yes. I'm, I'm that I would have to remind them, like when you move through a room, like it's not you as this like super generous, benevolent, like, you want people all eyes looking at you. There's a certain like gait that you carry yourself with that like, do we really walk like that? <laughs> like, you know, so it was, it, I mean, it was fun to sort of draw upon both things from my past and, and that I loved so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's, I mean, it's scripted obviously, but in the concert, there is a spontaneous moment during look at us now when Daisy, she you knows she, she realizes like beforehand, like she, they can't move, go on like this and she needs to let Billy go and he she she tells him like go like go back to Camilla and he leaves and that's it's such a moving moment and you know it changes the course of everything for the band so what, what was it like directing that scene and did you and Riley talk about when she would say go and you know like how how that would all work during the song that scene sort of is one of my a my favorite moments in the whole show and really because it's sort of the culmination of, I think, all of the work that we did previously. It really was, for me, um, I was not making a show about Fleetwood Mac. You know what I mean? Like that's, it was a diff that's a, a scripted thing. It's a, it's our own world. I was, um, I was making a show for me and this might be different from the other block and even from the showrunners. Like for me, what I was rooted in was this is a show about people showing each other grace, like at every turn, whether it's Karen knowing Graham will never leave her and he should to have the life that he wants. She shows him grace, even at the expense of her own heart and letting him go. It's, you know, people forgiving each other. It's Camilla forgiving Billy and showing him grace. It's Daisy showing Billy that ultimate grace of being like, go. Um, that that I felt like was the the thing that I talked to all of the actors about. It was, you know, this is what the show for me is, is about people showing each other grace at, at their most human, fragile, messy selves. Like there's somebody who loves you enough to forgive you. And so, yes, me and Riley talked about it, but but me and all of the actors talked about it. And it was always sort of watching the performances and feeling like, do I feel genuinely moved and do I feel like that grace has been earned and achieved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and we obviously see that at the end, at the final two scenes, basically with yeah. Camilla's message from beyond and, you know, giving Billy and Daisy grace to, to be together. Uh, so what was it like shooting that with, with her? Um, I mean, first of all, like just seeing her adjust her wig when she sits down for, <laughs> to do the interview with her daughter is it's so moving. And then also the, the final shot when, Billy goes to Daisy's door and just kind of like how did you calibrate like the 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 smiles that you wanted each of them to give to each other and then <laughs> it's a very hopeful ending but we also it's like it's open-ended enough for the viewer to imagine for themselves like the future they would have together yeah I think with in both scenes all I have to work with um is my own internal um, sort of gut reaction of, did it work on me? And I, at that point, I have to turn it, tune out, sometimes even the showrunner, sometimes producers, if we have to go again because it didn't work on me yet, then we have to go again. Like it's, that's my only compass. So I think in the scenes with Camilla at the end, those were very, very moving because she actually asked, um, can she not do the interview questions with the other actress, could I be the one to ask her the questions because it would make her cry? And so we did, um, 
you know, I, I sat there next to the camera operator, like on his dolly and was asking her the questions. And I felt when our big muscle bound camera operator, I felt when he got sort of like moved <laughs> and then I felt like, am I crying? And like, and I just looked at her and was like, we have it. And I felt like with the smiles at the end with her and, and uh, Billy, with Daisy and Billy, I went in with a few options, obviously, but I just felt like, let's just keep going. Let's never give it all away. Like this can be an afternoon. This can be a lifetime. This can, you know what I mean? This can be a total surprise. Maybe there was a call before. Like, let's try it a few different ways. The one that I printed is the one that's in the in the final cut because it was the one where I felt like anything can happen now. And like, that's how I wanted to feel more than like, oh, they're definitely going to be together from now yeah, on. Like they, they wanted, didn't kiss or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted the audience to decide like, what is their ending? Mm-hmm. Um, well, lastly, uh, what was your favorite Daisy Jones and the Six song? Uh, you know, coming from music videos, I remember at the end of the day, I would just never want to hear that song again. <laughs> and like on Daisy, it's the opposite. I have worn that album out. <laughs> um, probably might be Look At Us Now. I love Let Me Down Easy also. Um I love Honeycomb. I mean, it might be look at us now though. Like for just, it's so emotional like when we were all in the, the vans driving to the Emmys together, we put on the album and like, we oh. that's the song we were all singing. Our showrunners, six year old was beside me belting it out. <laughs> like that so feels like emotionally that it's, it's a banger. It's a good one. It, it's a banger and it, it has a, you know, soft spot in my heart. Um, well, Nzinga, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time uh, and have a great day. Thanks so Thank much for being you. here. <laughs>